Well, welcome to Hamilton County Newsmakers. I'm Perry Williams, and today as my guest, I got uh, Dr. Dave Monday from uh, Sheridan Schools. And uh, Dave, I guess uh, it was back uh, when you first started. We got you here probably within the first month and talked to you, and we've talked to you a couple times since then. And I thought it was time to have you back on, and let's talk a little bit about Sheridan school system. I appreciate you having me, and you know I'll always come talk about Sheridan. So whatever you need, that's me to a great do, thing. Be great. One one of the things that that uh, that you started last year uh, was your uh, your Black Hawk uh, Care program. Okay. Talk a little bit about that on how it's progressed from last sure. school year to now. It's actually had a pretty profound impact on the whole school district. The Black Hawk Care program is our system of setting up. What we've done so far is there's now five components of it that we've added. When we originally began, it was just uh, daycare, and then we started preschool. Um, so our daycare consists of two different classrooms now that are both full, which is great for us. And right next door to that's our preschool run by Mrs. Christian, who we were very, very blessed and fortunate to have her move it from her house to the school, and we've max that out as well as now we're running our own before and after school care which is a part of it um, I think we're up to several students in that right now and then this summer we did a pilot last year with two uh, courses that were packed one was on a I think it was cooking and horseback riding which was really cool um, and then this summer we'll end up adding a whole bunch more of teacher-led summer camps is what we're going to try to do so We've been very fortunate. I've had some great people. Mrs. Keever's come and helped me run that. I've got Ashley that helps run the, the daycare part of it. I mean, Mrs. Uh, you name it. There's lots of people involved in Mrs. Childers that helped me get it off the ground. But it's done for a reason. The whole program's put together so that when these kids, and this is what we've seen this year, when these kids then transfer across the hallway to go into kindergarten, this isn't a new experience being in school for them. You know, right. we have tons of kids that are already there. And I think that we've discussed how we've already seen the impact of our kindergartners. We didn't spend nearly as much time this year getting acclimated to school, if you will, because, you know, we got 100 other kids in school already before they get and there. And guess so. what? You get more time to educate yes. your students. And, and our, our preschool teachers working with Mrs. Moore and Mrs. Zachary, our daycare kids, and they're all that, that curriculum was all straight in line with each other, and it's very been very beneficial. You know, we won't see the payoffs, Perry, for, you know, four or five years when it gets down to it, but... Those first baby steps of hearing, you know, when you add a Mrs. Christian, a fantastic teacher, with our three great kindergarten teachers already working out alignment, and they notice the fact, you know, what the difference has made, I know it's working, so we're getting there. Yeah, um, so that, that that's a great thing, and that was a great program that you started uh, last year, and like you said, it, it, it just started... Uh, last year when you first got there right yeah and I shortly believe, afterwards right after we got there we worked it in over the summer and then we actually we started the middle of the year last year to get it up and going um and quickly hit our max capacity to the point where i have a great problem to deal with next year i'm hoping maybe i'm adding a second preschool you know classroom next year so that'd be a i would not be yeah. upset by that so. absolutely <laughs> and, and and the one thing about it and, and it's something that uh um in fact, I, I've had conversation with uh, your state legislator, uh, Tony Cook, about already because he's so uh, in tune to education, okay, and the things that need to happen. But I'm greatly concerned, and, and I saw this and got this passion when I, when I lived in Tennessee. I, I'm very concerned about small town USA uh, because, I, you know, even though looking back and I look at Noblesville today, and when I tell people that Noblesville today is much like a Hamilton Heights or a Sheridan then, okay? Oh, yeah. It is today. Well, I grew okay? up, yes. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know exactly what I mean. And growing up in Carmel, yes. I mean, if you say that to a Carmel person, oh, I remember they'll look at you. But, much but, but yes. they'll kind of, the new people will kind of look at you a little funny, like, what are you talking about? Because it always hasn't been this way. Well, and yet. Take even Westfield. You drove right through Westfield. I mean, right. and now it is a, an unta fantastic. Mayor Cook has done great things there with Grand Park and Grand Junction and everything else. But you're right. That's the one thing, though, that it, it's, it's ironic. I've talked to Representative Cook about stuff like this yeah. as well. And, you know, and I do believe you know, between he and Todd Houston, there are some great education advocates Absolutely. in this area. Um, the biggest thing that makes a small town is the passion you have for your town. 
I mean, and you've heard me say many times, the best thing about being in Sheridan is that everybody in Sheridan loves Sheridan. Do we have our disagreements? Yes. Do we have times that we have to, I have to make decisions that doesn't make everybody happy? Yes. But the moral of the story is, when you get down to it, if you have that passion for the town you're in, which we have out there, it allows that small town to be successful. Do we have different challenges that every town south of us has? You know, and some of the times when I'm with Dr. Airwood up there, we talk about the northern Hamilton County issues. Sure. Um, and it is a different, you know, it, you know, it hurts us in some areas. You know, when I try to write a grant, half the time when I write down, you know, I'm looking at a, quite a large free and reduced population. I write down a grant that I live in Hamilton County. It hurts. But we're really thriving on that small town feel up there, too. And I think that our town council has made some decisions lately, too, that's helping us keep that small town feel. But... You're right. It's it's harder to to hold on to right now. Yeah, and and you know, and if you really look in this county, and I, I really feel this way, there is a certain a certain 146 south is one way, 146 to probably I don't know, probably 191st or something like that is another, which was Noblesville and Westfield. Right. Oh yeah. That. And then. Uh, the the Hamilton Heights and Sheridan is yet a different uh, it, climate of living it, it's, in, it in, is. This, in this county. You know, and I, I've said this to everybody, and, and you know this because you've known me for a long time. Right. I'm one of the fortunate individuals in this county. I've gone from a classroom teacher to superintendent and been within three school districts and never left Hamilton County. Right. Um, you know, and, and I've always told everybody how blessed and fortunate I am to be able to do that because let's in this education career, it doesn't happen much, no, and, and I know that. So I've been able, though, during that time to watch all these changes in population and how things shift and where they go. And you're right, there's a different culture in each of the three districts I've been in between Noblesville, Westfield, and Sheridan. But there is that overwhelming positive feeling in all the schools you're in in Hamilton County. And that, and I think that's why that's allowed this county to thrive so much. It's the belief in what we're trying to get done around here. And you get parental support like you don't get in other districts and other places. But you're right, when you talk about where Sheridan's at in particular, we do. I mean, it's great people, great families, great everything. We just have a few different things that we want to hold on to, you know, that maybe some of the other districts don't when it gets down to it. Absolutely. Um, we're, we're fortunate for that, Perry. You know that. You come up there a lot and you see it. I mean, it's a great place to be. There's very few places you can walk around and get as many hellos and highs when you walk through a... Well, and, I, and I love, I love, <laughs> I still love on a Friday night... Uh, you can go to the football field and everybody in the town's there, or you can go to a basketball game and everybody in the town's there. I, I, that, there is a difference. I had one of those moments a couple weeks ago. This is about our third to the last game. I'm driving up. It's just hitting twilight. And, you know, because of where we're situated, when the lights get turned on a little early, you can see them off in the distance. It's one of those, if I had any photography experience whatsoever, it would have been a fantastic oh, picture yeah, yeah. because you had that feel you knew what you were driving up on, just yeah. seeing the top of the lights and the way the back, it was a pretty cool experience. Yeah. But that was a perfect symbol of how important that small town feel is to us. Up oh, there absolutely, Sheridan. absolutely. Yeah. Well, we kind of run out of time this first session. <laughs> the next I want to talk about is, after the break, is a little bit to, for you to think about. Uh, your situation was you were very fortunate in your career to uh, spend time in Westfield when Westfield made such a huge growing spurt. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, uh, it could happen in Sheridan. Yeah. Okay? Right. Yeah. And uh, how that's prepared you for that. Uh, That'd be great. All right. So yeah. we'll be right back, and we'll talk to Dr. Dave Monday. Margaret and I decided to sell the old estate here. We had uh, only one choice in signage. Logan Street signs and banners. Conveniently not located on Logan Street anymore, but rather located on 10th Street on the south side of Noblesville. Well, we sold the old beauty and we were able to buy this wonderful estate. And we had so much money left over, I was able to buy this beautiful 1968 Eldorado Cadillac for Margaret. Only 472,000 miles. Margaret loves it because it's got those big seats and that heavy-duty suspension to support her Schvelt frame. Next time you're looking for signs or banners, call old Jim 
at Logan Street Signs and Banners, 773-7200. Conveniently not located on Logan Street anymore. Everyone knows it's easy to find first-run movies in the big theaters. But where can you go to watch your favorite classic movies on the big screen for the perfect night out? Why rent a flick when you can rent the entire theater? Call today to reserve our 32-seat theater for your next event or just stop by to see what's showing this weekend. The 14 by 7 foot screen and the high quality digital surround sound system offers all the amenities you would expect from the big theaters with a laid back atmosphere and comfortable seating of your own home. Wofford Theater at 1744 South 10th Street in Noblesville gives you the classic movies you want with a big theater experience. Well, we're back to Hamilton County Newsmakers, and uh, Dr. Dave Mundy is with me today, the superintendent of Sheridan Schools. And, um, you know, the first part we talked about uh, uh, your program, uh, your Blackhawk uh, care program, uh, and how it's expanded. But uh, I want to talk a little bit about Sheridan itself, because uh, the Sheridan, the Hamilton Heights area with Cicero and Arcadia, uh, this, it's much, much different uh, than maybe some of the schools of Noblesville and Westfield now today or, or Carmel Southeastern of Fishers is the focal point and Sheridan and Hamilton Heights are still the schools. I mean, mm-hmm. everything mm-hmm. revolves around them. Knowing that you went through a tremendous growth spurt in your career at Westfield during the Westfield schools when you were at Westfield, that growth of basically – uh, being a going from a 1A to a 5A school in less than Very 10 years frame, okay yeah. so so talk about that and maybe how that's prepared you a little bit for Sheridan not saying that Sheridan's going to be as big right. as Westfield but the growth is going to happen I, yeah it is um you know I've been very fortunate that Sheridan is the place that's been very good to me and that they've let me come back there, you know, three different times. Um, coming back this time, and this is what I discussed when I came back with the board, um, was, you know, when I was there nine years ago on my second tour of duty um, there, everybody talked about the growth that was coming. But we all knew it was 10, 15, 20. Well, now that 10, 15-year time frame is on the doorstep. Um, are we going to grow, like you said, tomorrow? No. But are we in the next four or five years? Yes. It, it, you, you go through the patterns of watching like Mr. Hinky did with Bridgewater. Now you're at Chatham Hills. If it grows at anywhere near that pace it did, that's a half mile from our school district. Um, you start looking at infrastructure. You start building there. You're talking about a realistic situation, much like Bridgewater, where the next housing additions are going to be real close to that Chatham Hills. Well, that's my school district up there, and that's what we're starting to look into. Um I think the best thing I gained when I was down at Westfield was, and you've heard me say this too, sir, I was smart enough to be very quiet, sit there and listen to some very, very smart people in terms of growth between, you know, the Mr. Hankey and the Mr. Estridge and Mayor Cook and, and Mr. Bertrand and, and, you know, my former boss, Dr. Keene, all talk about how this is coming together. I want to see that happen to Sheridan, but I do think the one difference, and this is no knock on any other town, Westfield did it in a way that was very controlled growth it didn't get out of hand i think until um some of the other like the fishers area for example for a while was was uncontrolled growth and now i think they've done one whale of a job of putting that back into the one thing i keep talking to everybody there and i think our towns did a very good job of is preparing for a controlled growth system and it has to be it has to be otherwise you do lose control and you have no method to the madness um Knowing that's coming, you know, I hope that I can help out, and I hope that I get to be there long enough to see the whole thing go through because it will be a system where if anything occurs in Sheridan, much like some of these other towns, they'll hold on to that heritage even as we do add more people to it because sure. it's very, it's pretty amazing how quickly people become part of that Blackhawk way yeah. You know, once you get up into Sheridan, and you feel it when you're there. You do. You know people are proud of that Blackhawk. You know, we're... 
and if, we can talk later too if you want to about you know we got the Blackhawk Commons coming into play. Um, some of these new items coming in come in, earning the respect and gaining the respect of that shared in community when they right, do that. Right, so right. I don't know if it'll make me any good at it, sir, but I'll do well, my best to help know, out as we get there. It's a, it's a great to have Mr. Bertrand on your school board, sure. too, from Westfield, yes, going yes. through all the trials and tribulation of financial side, which is always a huge side of, of any growth in any community. It, and we try more than anybody. You know, and, and schools get accused of this more than I think any other business in the world, that we always have this hidden money or doing something. I do think in our district we do the best we can to be as open and honest as we can on any situation, but especially when it comes to finances, because I can't succeed without the businesses and the people in the community. I know that. I mean, I can't. Oh, absolutely. And if I don't have their support, you know, I, I, the best compliment I ever got is I'm the most transparent person in the world because I don't have anything I want to keep hitting. I want everybody to know what's yeah. going on because I need the support of what we're trying to get done there because that business succeeding in Sheridan. And those future growths impact that Blackhawk daycare that we first talked about. Absolutely. I mean, those kids Absolutely. coming up and unpacked what I'm able to do with them. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I like to think, and this is what, kind of a different topic, but at the same time, I just got out of a meeting meet with a couple other superintendents talking about we are in a day and age where small schools, you know, to go back, have to promote themselves. And right. we are a business where I have to sell what I do up there. And, and I think that sometimes... If you go to many of these schools around us, they picture us as this farming community, farming school, if you will. No, we do, and we are, and that's part of what we do. But there's also so much other stuff that we have going on up there. Now, I've mentioned to you one of our things we keep telling people, if you come up and share it, and most of them don't leave once they see the school. Yeah. We're the same as a private school, only you don't pay the tuition to go. Now, if you wish the faith-based part of a private school, great. And, and I'm and very happy get for it. Yes, school. and, and oh, yeah. that is the way the system works. But the reality of it is when it comes to classes and offerings and anything else, we do the same thing up there in that small school setting that you could do at any other school around the state. And that's what we're trying to start getting that word out on all the opportunities. And we can think outside the box. You know, we have a couple other kids that when we can't think of a class they really, really want, we figure out a way to get it to them up there where it's harder to do in a bigger school setting because if I do it for you, i got to do it for you, and i got to do it for sure. you and everybody else. So it allows us to be very creative in allowing our kids to – get into areas they want to be in. Yeah. So, But talking about that, uh, being able to give students uh, more, um, talk a little bit about the technology and some of the updates yeah. that you've done there. And, and you know, and the one thing about it is uh, with your relationship with Dr. Arrowwood and everything and, and the job he did before there, yes. I mean, he felt like that Hamilton Heights was his next step from Sheridan. So, but, uh, you know, all the ball was to a certain extent, it's rolling. It's just got to keep rolling, and yes. that's what you've... I don't think people realize the, co the amount of collaboration dude, that goes on amongst the individuals in this county. You know, I, I work with, especially being a little bit northern, Dr. Niedermeyer and Dr. Erwood a lot, um, you know, as well as the rest of the county, too, but we share, share similar problems. Um, Dr. Erwood, I have told everybody, did one great job of getting shared into the worst fiscal time they've ever had in their history. Um, where I was able to benefit from that, and that goes into the technology, was as he made his transition over to Heights, I was through that part and where he had us set up and ready to go and did a fantastic job of me allowing him to explode some of these programs. I was also fortunate when I was at Westfield, I did lots of studies on how to properly do technology in the classroom. Uh, we're very fortunate to share it in our technology base. We basically next year will be bringing our own technology across the board in the high school. We are one-to-one -one in the middle school right now. Every middle schooler gets a, a, a computer. And we also have lots available to elementary. Now, elementary is a little different philosophy to me. I don't, while I want them doing some work on the computer, I, we have the best elementary staff. And there, I'm, I'm not saying I'm very honest in that, with best elementary staff in the state of Indiana. And I want them in front of the kids. The you know, I don't need a, a, sec, or a first grader, a second grader in front of a computer when I've got some of those great teachers sitting there. I'd rather them doing work. But... The resources of having that available to enhance what they're doing are very much available up there in Sheridan. So absolutely. Well, thank you. Uh, we're going to take a break now. We'll be back in just a few minutes. And another program, uh, uh, Dr. Mundy started last year uh, uh, was uh, he wanted feedback from the community, and so uh, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the Smart Future update sure. and some of the things that you did with Marion and Duke Energy. Sure. That'd we'll be, be right back. Uh, when 
Margaret and I decided to sell the old estate here, we had uh, only one choice in signage. Logan Street signs and banners. Conveniently not located on Logan Street anymore, but rather located on 10th Street on the south side of Noblesville. Well, we sold the old beauty and we were able to buy this wonderful estate. And we had so much money left over, I was able to buy this beautiful 1968 Eldorado Cadillac for Margaret. Only 472,000 miles. Margaret loves it because it's got those big seats and that heavy-duty suspension to support her schvelt frame. Next time you're looking for signs or banners, call old Jim at Logan Street Signs and Banners, 773-7200. Conveniently not located on Logan Street anymore. Everyone knows it's easy to find first-run movies in the big theaters. But where can you go to watch your favorite classic movies on the big screen for the perfect night out? Why rent a flick when you can rent the entire theater? Call today to reserve our 32-seat theater for your next event or just stop by to see what's showing this weekend. The 14 by 7 foot screen and the high quality digital surround sound system offers all the amenities you would expect from the big theaters with a laid back atmosphere and comfortable seating of your own home. Wofford Theater at 1744 South 10th Street in Noblesville gives you the classic movies you want with a big theater experience. You're up. Right. You know, several times throughout this, the conversation, these two sessions, uh, you mentioned uh, the Black Hawk Way, okay? And I guess uh, here at uh, Hamilton County TV, uh, we, we actually, uh, on Monday during football season, uh, we get to tr see the true Black Hawk. Oh, yeah. The Black Hawk Way of <laughs> Larry Bud Wright. Yes, when yes. he comes rolling up here about 15 minutes before the show's over because he's going last, yes. okay? <laughs> And he's going in there and get him a couple pieces of pizza, and then he's ready to go on. He's ready to talk Sheridan yes. football <laughs> and what's going on over at Sheridan. So, you know, you guys had a, a celebration this year of him coaching at Sheridan for 50 it's years. Amazing. And, it, it, you know, and you and I have been around athletics for a long time. It does not happen that you have a coach for 50 years now. No, no not anymore the way athletics are. And more or less you get people that don't stay in it very long whatsoever. Right. I mean – any of your sports, yeah. you know, and especially in this county where you have some of the best wrestling, cross country, volleyball pro in the state of Indiana, it's a demanding job anymore. Right. And realistically, a lot of your people after about 10 years get burned out because you go 24 7, 365 days a year. To have somebody around for 50 years is very humbling. And, and, and lived, I mean, sharing yes. his life. I mean, yes. <laughs> but people also don't realize here's a man, too, that's very aware. I mean, he took when I first went there as baseball coach. He was one of the first people that talked to me and told me what I needed to know. He also knows the majority of where all his ex players are and what they're doing. You know, it's way beyond just I show up and do X's and O's at the football field. It's also how many of it. I, I couldn't begin to tell you how many people he's mentored. They're out and about in the state of Indiana. You know, it it was like with me I, I, when I was here with Denny Cass which was a great situation for me to get mentored by. And then I go over there and get mentored by him on just beyond baseball and everything. I mean, it is, people don't give him enough credit for the amount of work he does. Oh, absolutely, on, and the lives he's touched. Yes. And I think it kind of showed in your celebration over there of how many people yeah. return. And how many different age groups and old teams turned and came yeah. back, too. That was fantastic. Yeah. Very humbled by the number of people that showed up there. And humbled by the way the community came out to support it that night, too. Absolutely, so. absolutely. Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, the Smart Future update and some of the things. Sure. Talk a little bit earlier about that program and how it got started because it's basically feedback <laughs> from the people. We started off last year, uh, reached out. Mark Labar from Duke reached out to me about doing uh, um, a couple other different projects. Realistically, we, we changed that into a needs assessment to where I wanted to hear from the community. Um, I have said this and I have thanked people over and over again. We had four meetings last year that we had over 100 people at every meeting. You know, there's many districts that are 15 times our size. You can't get 100 people to a meeting. And it was 
Um, but what came out of it at the end was I came up with a list that basically that I'd say I didn't. I put together the list of what everybody wished to see happen in Sheridan uh, with both personnel, curriculum, and facilities. We've had a great response, Perry, and we've got very so fortunate. Mrs. Pope Joy and our school board have done some great fiscal things, and that goes on the tail end what Dr. Erwood did for us to allow us to really get some work done over the last couple of years. Some of which, you know, is minor, painting stuff across the district. Um, we've been able to add an exit at the elementary, but I'm very, very happy to say that we're probably about 60% of our way through, you know, a list that had several items on it that people wanted to see done and done now. Um, Amazing. It, it has been in the support of many of the businesses that have come out and then the things that I wasn't sure quite how we were going to handle that's come out. You know, JBS United and several others that have helped us finish projects has been great, too. Um, we still got a ways to go. We got several. I told everybody, you know, we did, if you take the academics and facilities, we did almost like anywhere, depending on how you count them, about 100 projects this summer. And some were very minor, you know, but it they was all a very busy summer. Done, yeah, there, stuff that had to be and finished. And the great thing, it was important to the people of Sheridan to bring it up in a meeting to get it fixed. And when you have buy-in from people, it's a lot easier to get it done. I had, um, the other day... Um, and, and this is the kind of kids we have, too, which makes it even nicer. One of the uh, older high school students, it, w it was two guys, and I believe, if I know them right, they were juniors, that walked by and actually thanked me for how well the grounds and everything look right now. And that was one of our projects, to increase the aesthetics of the district, you know, make it just look nice for our kids walking in. And our people from Sodexo and our people that have helped on grounds have done a great job of doing that with the help of K&S, though, another business that comes sure. in and helps us. It's nice to know that our kids are noticing, you know, that the hallways have been painted and they're very, very bright and sparkly and that the uh, the grounds are kept up. Um, so I know it's having an impact when something as simple as that, which seems simple, you get a junior boy or two junior boys that are grateful for that when it gets That's down to That's probably the biggest extreme side of boy. Oh. A boy that's 16, 17 years old noticing yes. how, how, aesthetically how you know, things look. And I'm sure he didn't even realize that what a big impact that yeah, had. Yeah, but you're yeah. kind of like, hey, thank you. That was yeah. great. But that's what the community wanted. The community wanted things upgraded. They wanted them looking nicer. And, and you know, that was where you go back full circle. This isn't occurring if this community doesn't support even the referendum five years ago and everything else, too, because we got through that. Now it allowed us to keep taking those steps forward. And... My job is to make sure that over the next couple of years we hit every plateau of excellence I can possibly get us to. Um, and I'll do what I can to help everybody out to do that. Well, that sounds great. That sounds great. It, you know, it's a, it's always a pleasure to have you here at, uh, at, at uh, Hamilton County TV and talk uh, the information about what's going on in Sheridan uh, because there are a lot of things going on. And uh, we are very blessed, like you said, in this county that uh, – you know that we have the schools that we have here, yes, we and and, uh, and the f the the people that we have here. I mean, in athletics, academically, uh, uh, any way you want to take a cut the the piece of the pie. I'd even throw out socially and emotionally too. You know, one of the things that I need to definitely give credit to as well is you know out of Westfield started the youth assistance program, and I know you guys are familiar with that, but that has now gone countywide. Um, that is a program, too, one, that we have some, Lisa Samuels, with the help of Tricia Akers, does one fantastic job of getting us off the ground. We are basically five months into this youth assistance program with the goal of that whole program is to make sure that kids are getting the support of the things they need to be successful before we get to middle school and high school. I believe already Mrs. Samuels has taken in about 40-plus kiddos in our program over a four-month period. We already have a group going to Boys and Girls Club. We have mentors coming out of the woodwork um, from different places. Um, now, they're, we're, we still got a lot of work to do, but a simple program like that that can help with the areas that I need assistance with, you know, that I can't help with, has been a huge to our community. So I give a lot of credit as well in that social emotional part for Mrs. Samuels and everything she's doing up there with all of our teachers and families. Um, and you know, the one good thing about that youth assistance program is it, it has now allowed uh, uh, other people to take notice in the county and statewide. I know Judge Nation well, Judge very, Nation, Judge Felix are, are working vital. very, yes. very hard right now on yes. the state level. To, to possibly take this program statewide. Well, okay. Representative Braun is now, I think, getting involved. Um, there's several now that see that this is 
This is something that I can't, as a school administrator, do some of the things a youth assistance program right. can legally do. And that's done because of Judge Felix and Judge Nation taking right. an interest in wanting kids to not show up in their courthouse. Yeah, um, yeah. And I think, you know, the one thing that we talk about and, uh, you know, everyone on the, on the news and in the legislation, they want to pass more money to take care of crime and all those things out there on the streets. But maybe if we do it at the front end, yes. then maybe we can f- make it better. That's our whole goal. Uh, I read a study once that the Harvard or Yale did, and I don't remember exactly what it was, but uh, it made a profound impact. Kids make up their mind if they're going to graduate at the end of sixth grade. You know, So if we're sitting there trying to make sure a kid's going to graduate as a junior, I need to do that, and we will do that. But mentally and emotionally, they start deciding at eight, in sixth grade where they're going to end up trying to do and how much effort they're going to put in succeeding. And that's what the youth assistance program it does. It makes sure you're getting the food, the clothing, the heat, the warmth at home so that you don't have to worry about that and I can help them make you successful academically. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Appreciate it, sir. Appreciate you coming. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Monday. So we'll be here next week, and uh, I have Dr. Airwood from Hamilton High School. So a uh, couple of good weeks here. We'll see you next week.